Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I'm the mompreneur slash business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your own yarn color chart to use in your crochet business from scratch. We are going to be using Canva to create this color chart. You can use the free account. Everything that we'll do inside of this tutorial you can do on the free account. I have the pro account and I highly recommend it. It is my secret weapon inside of my crochet business. I will pay for it for the life of my business. Anytime I meet a new business owner, it's one of the first things that I say is, do you use Canva? Do you have Canva Pro? It is so helpful. It makes everything really easy. It's very organized and quick. Um, I highly recommend it. I couldn't say enough nice things about Canva Pro. I will put an affiliate link down below if you would like to try Canva Pro and have a 30 day free trial. Also, if creating your own yarn color chart from scratch is not your cup of tea, I have a template already created that you can use and just fill in the pictures, fill in the names, and you're good to go. I will put the link to the template down below for you. You sign up to my email list. The template will be in your inbox automatically and then I will continue to serve you through email every week with all kinds of resources and freebies and blog posts to help you grow your crochet business and take it to the next level. There's also a full video showing you how to use the template. I will link that video for you in the description below as well. So for everyone who wants to make their own templates and you're still hanging out here, let's hop on over to my computer screen and pull up Canva. Okay, we're just going to go to canva.com and then we are going to create a custom size over here. So we're going to click custom size and we're going to make this an eight and a half by 11. This is going to be for a full sheet of paper template. If you want to make a color chart to put in your Etsy listings as an Etsy photo, you're going to want to change this. Well, you're going to want to keep it at pixels. We're going to be using it in inches, but for Etsy photos, you want to do 2000 wide with about 1500 tall pixels not inches that's going to be formatted for etsy listing photos we're just going to do an eight and a half by 11 which is a piece of paper we are going to start by adding a a few design elements to our blank template here so i'm going to throw in a frame to go around the border of my page so i'm going to go over here to elements we're going to type in border and click enter um this is, a, is everything that they have to offer on Canvas. So we're gonna filter it. We're gonna change it to static images only. We don't need animated images. We're gonna click apply filters. And then we're gonna click graphics here because we don't need photos. We just need to see the graphics that we can use. Now we have all these different options. You could use this and just put them in the corners and change the colors and match your brand. You can go for a whole rectangle situation to go on the whole page. Um, this one will not let you edit the, the height and the width, so we might not be able to use that one. But you're just gonna wanna keep looking around until you find a border that you like that matches your brand. I recommend keeping it simple and nothing too distracting because the whole point of this is gonna be the yarn, not the, the decorativeness. This is really pretty. If watercolors speaks to your brand, you could put this on like the top and the bottom really subtly. That would be gorgeous. So I just copy and pasted, scoot it down just like that. That would be really pretty. We're just gonna stick with this for now. Okay, now that we have our border, we might end up having to make these a little bit smaller depending upon how much room we need. You can add some text at the top. So with Canva Pro, you get a brand kit, which is really nice. If you don't have Canva Pro, um, you won't have selected fonts already over here that you've curated. This is the one that I use. It's a free font, and it's called Anton. That's a font that I use all the time. But we are just going to make a title that says, all caps, A Crafty Concept. That is my business name. We're going to make it bigger. We're going to move it to the top. We're going to make sure it's centered, and it is. I'm going to spread it out a little bit, highlight it, and then change the letter spacing. So the space in between the letters is a little bit more spaced out. And then we need to put it back in the center. Now it doesn't look super great with our background. So I'm gonna put a white background behind just the letters. So to do that, we're gonna click on the letters, go to effects, go to background, and then it gives us this yellow background. We're gonna change it to, we're gonna keep it yellow for now so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna change the roundness. I don't like it round. If you like yours round, you can do that. I'm gonna do this. And the spread, which means how close it is to your words. We need it 
pretty close. That looks good. Change the color to white. I don't love it, so we're gonna go back to effects. We can also change the transparency. So I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent so you can kind of see the design behind there, um, but it's still you can read the, the letters because you want people to know your business name, right? So then I'm gonna add some body text with this font and I'm gonna change it to uh, not, not all caps and it's gonna say yarn color chart. Make it a little bit bigger. That is too big. I'm gonna go with 16, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna go with 16 and then pull it up here right in the middle, boom. Okay, now that we have the basic design elements, we're going to add our image spots, the parts on this where we can add images of our yarn. So we're gonna go over here and go back to elements. This time you're gonna type in frame, and these are all of the different frames that you can use to fill in with your yarn pictures. You can get as funky as you want or as simple as you want. Again, I think simpler is better, but everybody's branding is different. Everybody's ideal customer is different. So you choose the frame that best fits your brand. This is the frame that I used in the free template option that I have available in the description below. So this time we're going to use something else. Let's see if we can find a good one. A hexagon would be cool for a crafty concept. That's part of my branding. Also, pro tip, if you are inside of Crochet Boss Academy, you can use elements from your branding board to create all of these things. And you can use elements from your branding board to look at what shape you should use. If you are not a Crochet Boss Academy student and you are curious what Crochet Boss Academy is, there is a link below where you can learn all about it. So let's choose, I'm just gonna go simple this time with a simple circle. And then I'm gonna make it the size that I want just by clicking the corner and dragging up or down and just go with one for now and we can change it when I move it around those little things pop up so there's some margins that you can use there's the center there's the middle and it snaps to those things but I'm gonna throw this in there just like that I'm gonna hit command C command V to copy and paste it I'm gonna do that till I have three and then I'm going to highlight all of these, Command C, Command V, and Command C, Command V. Now I have nine circles that I can use to fill up with my yarn colors. If you have more than nine yarn colors, keep copying and pasting until you have all that you need. Keep, if you have less, delete some. You get to choose, this is totally customizable for you but we do want it to be very organized either way. So I'm gonna grab all of these and kind of move them to the center of the page. Where's the middle? There's the middle. So there's middle center. It doesn't have to be middle center based on your design. You might need to have it up or down a little bit. Also, these look like they're all pretty symmetrically spaced from one another, but if, if you wanted to double check, you can highlight all of them, click position, click vertically, that will organize them vertically. And then since it's grayed out, that means it's already, they're already good. Let's see what horizontally does. Nothing, they were already good. Up and down, position, horizontally, they were already good, vertically, that one moved a smidge. Um, but you would just do that for all of them. They should all be, yeah, everything should be grayed out now. Now they are all evenly spaced and you can move them around if you wanted them to not be so close together, you could move them however you wanted. Totally up to you. I like them in this spot, so I'm gonna leave them there. I don't really love how high up it is, so I'm just gonna scoot it down a little bit. It's gonna be slightly off the middle, but that's okay. I'm just kidding. We need to, to make room for our yarn names. If you want to add names, of the yarn so your person can say, oh, I want that bubblegum pink right there. We need to make space for that. So I'm gonna highlight all of my circles, make them a smidgen smaller, and then I'm going to space them out a little bit more because there's no need for them to be right on top of each other. And then we are going to space them out this way. I'm just using my arrow keys to move them a little bit at a time. So now I don't, I still don't think that's enough room for the text. So once we make room for all of our text and get all of our squares, circles where we want them to go, we can add little text boxes underneath each of them. Um, let me make sure we're all nice and neat here by checking my evenly spaced 
position options. Okay, now I'm gonna grab this one again in Command C, Command V. I'm gonna change the size down to 12 because if you're printing this out, 12 point font is the go-to size for documents. Now we're going to put each little text box like this under our circle. So space it to where you want it to go. I just zoomed in a little bit down here. We want it to be in the center of our circle. So grab your text box, hit shift, grab your circle, position, center, it's already good. So we don't have to move them. Okay, so now we're gonna grab this. And not, you can ha change the font to like yarn color if you want to change the words because we're gonna fill this in with the color. Um, but we just need some placeholder text for all of our circles. So I'm just gonna copy and paste all of them until they are all lined up. Center with the circle they belong with. Position, center, good. Position, center, there we go. And lined up with one another. We want them all to be lined up. And once you highlight them, you can see they are all lined up well. So I'm just gonna continue to put that on all of my spots. And we need to make sure each set of circles the text is spaced from the circle in the same distance. Just centering all of these and then we're gonna group all of them and center them as a whole. So I'll show you how to do that. Just keep doing them one at a time, making sure they're all centered. Okay. Okay. Centered, awesome. Now we're gonna make sure that the spacing between this box and this circle is the same. Because if one of them was really close compared to the others, you can tell. See how this row of text is really close to the circles and this one is not? You can tell, so we don't want that. And we all, I just did Command Z to undo. And we also don't want them to be further from. Because then we, we don't know, does that one belong to there? Or does that one belong to there? We want it all the same. Once you get your text boxes lined up and centered with your circles, I'm going to go ahead and group all of mine together one at a time, um, just so I can double check that my formatting is perfect. If you just wanna eyeball it and are happy with that, go for it. I Honestly, I think this looks fine, um, but just in case I have somebody watching that wants it to be exactly perfect, exactly, this is for you. So I grouped them all together, so now if I move one, the text goes with it. So we're gonna highlight these three, make sure they are centered. Highlight these three, make sure they are centered. And these three, make sure they are centered. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the horizontal. Good, position, good, position, good. Excellent, easy peasy. Now we can start adding our yarn colors. So I'm gonna show you how to find your yarn colors and then how to upload them to Canva and then how to use them in this thing that you made. This is your template. So if you want to like make a copy of it before you start filling with it, so say you have a line of cotton colors that you use, but you also have a line of acrylic colors that you use. I would go ahead and duplicate this by pushing that plus sign up there and then you can change you have another one. So if you fool with this one, you still have a perfect template that's not been messed with yet. Um, so, and then you can rename them here. This would be acrylic yarn color chart and cotton yarn color chart or blanket yarn color chart or uh, Chanel yarn color chart, whatever it is that you need. You could even do different yarn brands, whatever it is that you need to title them, you can. But now we have a perfectly good template. So if we mess anything up, we can start fresh. So let's go and grab some yarn. So I'm just gonna go to hobbylobby.com Search for the yarn that I need. Yarn be soft and sleek. This is my favorite yarn in the world. If you've never tried it and you have a Hobby Lobby near you, I highly recommend it. We're gonna click down here on more colors and it's gonna open up the actual listing. Now we're going to look at all these color options we have over here and choose the yarns that we want to use in our template. I'm just gonna click this tobacco one. I'm gonna show you a hack that I learned accidentally. Before you save this image, you wanna click on this Click on that and make it bigger. Then you're gonna hover over the image. I'm not clicking on it, I'm just hovering. I'm gonna hold down my control key on my keyboard and then I'm gonna click and it's gonna give me this option here. We're gonna click save image. 
And then I'm going to change it to T-O-B-A-C-C-O -C -C yarn. I'm going to say yarn because I've already have one saved as tobacco and it's going to say you already have one of those. So I'm just making it tobacco yarn. If, it, if I didn't already have one saved in my desktop, I would just make it tobacco because that is the name of the yarn. So then I'm going to click save. It's going to put it down here where my downloads go, but it's also on my desktop. So now that I have my yarn saved, we can add it to our, our template that we created. The reason we make it big before we save the image is because the image quality is better. So that's why I hit this before I save it. I found that accidentally, but I'm happy that I did because now we get stellar sharp images for our color chart. So let's go back over here to our color chart that we're working on. We're gonna go over here to the uploads button. You can see I've uploaded a ton of different ones already. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna click it and hold it, and then I'm gonna drag it into this space and then I'm gonna let it go. And then it's gonna upload for me right there. Then after it uploads, we're gonna grab the image and, and drag it over here into one of our circle frames and let it go. Now, if you want the look of the whole skein of yarn, you're welcome to do that. You can also grab this whole skein and just size it that way. And if you wanted to remove, like say you had your um, background wasn't white like ours is, say you changed the background to light pink. I don't like that at all. It's linen color. If you uploaded that image, you're gonna have that white square behind. If you wanted to remove that, you can do that here with the pro account. Um, but we are not gonna do any of that. I think if you sell finished pieces that not showing the whole skein of yarn is the way you want to go because your ideal customer doesn't care what the yarn looks like, doesn't care what brand it is. All she cares about is the color and you're not using the best use of your space by not fully filling it with the color of the yarn. So I'm going to change, we'll leave this linen for now instead of white so you can see what's happening here because um, it did fill in the whole circle with the image of the yarn. So now I'm going to click on the yarn. I'm going to double click, two clicks, and that's gonna give me this box here. Then I can grab one of the corners and make the yarn bigger. And I like to fill in my entire shape as tightly as I can, so not too big, but just big enough so there's not any piece of the label here. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see. We don't want the label getting into our frame here. This little bit transparent part is showing you the whole image, but what's not transparent is gonna be what's in your frame. So we're gonna scoot it over just a smidgey so we know that that label isn't getting in there and it's not, it's fully filled in on this side. I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see and then just click off of it and boom, Bob's your uncle. You have this gorgeous circle of yarn. We can change the color down here to, you guessed it, tobacco. And now we have the first yarn of our nine yarn colors. Continue to do this with all of the different colors by downloading the images one at a time, making them big, filling it in as tightly as you can, and then changing the name. I think this one's called Spice. After you finish filling in all of your circles and naming all of your yarn, your color chart will be complete. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to white because I like that better. Also, it's gonna be better for printing, but that is all you do to create your own template. You do the exact same thing if you wanna make one fit for Etsy. Again, that is 2,000 pixels wide by about 1,500 pixels tall. You can change the tall if you want to, but 2,000 pixels wide is what Etsy recommends, but nothing too techy techy. And now you have a beautifully branded color chart that's going to serve your ideal customer well so they can clearly see the different color options that you have available. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you like this tutorial and found it useful. I have other Canva tutorials here on my YouTube channel as well, including how to make your own link in bio page for Instagram and how to make your own product tags to attach to your makes like for markets with your price tag and tells what the product is and stuff like that. Be sure to check out those videos if you need more Canva help. Again, I love Canva. It is my secret weapon. I will always use Canva for the life of my business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more crochet business tip tutorials and free crochet patterns. Those are the two things that I put out here on my YouTube channel. I also send out things weekly in my email list, so be sure to make sure you are on that email list if you're not already. 
already. If you have a crochet business, I'm going to serve you well through email. So definitely check that out. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so the YouTube algorithm will show it to more crocheters who need to make their own branded yarn color charts. And last but not least, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I hope this helps. I hope it gets you lots of sales. I hope it makes shopping with you an easier experience for your customers. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.